Waiver Wire presented by Snickers Rookie Mistake. Maybe you just need a Snickers or maybe you just need some fantasy help, right? Here are the Waiver Wire ads or the most popular ones for week 11. Audric estimated the Broncos. He's only owned in 15% of leagues right now. For much more on this, want to send it out to Jamie Eisenberg and Dave Richard. Thanks, Chris. Should be a fun week on the waiver wire. We'll start at the running back position because it might be the first time we have actually running backs that matter to fantasy managers. And there's a potential new starter for the Broncos. That's Audric Estime. As we show you the list of the running backs that you should be looking to pick up for week number 11. Audric Estime leading that group. You got Gus Edwards coming off a strong game as well. 10 carries for 55 yards. Cam Akers might be the best one, though, if Aaron Jones does miss week 11 against the Tennessee Titans dealing with a rib injury. Tajay Spears could be a good flex. And then you have some handcuffs that could matter at some point down the stretch. Trey Benson, Zach Charbonnet, Blake Corum all in good spots as the number two running backs on good offenses based on what we've seen from the starters there. Jalen Wright, Kenneth Gainwell also fall in that category. I'm curious about Zamir White, Dave, with uh, the coordinator change for the Raiders, but that's more of a deeper league ad. Really, it's about Audric Estime, though, because he could be a difference maker for fantasy managers. 14 carries, 53 yards against the Chiefs in a disappointing defeat. You see what Javante Williams and Dalil McLaughlin failed to do against Kansas City. But based on what Sean Payton said Monday, SMA could be the guy for the Broncos moving forward. And I know this graphic looks gross because combined it's eight PPR points. That's not very good. But the bottom line is this. We've got an opportunity to pick up a lead running back off the waiver wire in week 11 in fantasy football. Everybody's going to be going after this guy because of the opportunity that he presents in this situation. And I watched the film. He's a big physical running back. He's got good burst. His vision is just okay. So that's the one thing that kind of holds me back a little bit. But even as a pass protector, he was willing to get his nose dirty. He ran a couple of routes. There's upside here on top of him being a bully back. You need him to score a touchdown for him to really be good for fantasy. But as far as a guy that's going to get around 15 touches per game, yeah, he's going to be someone that you can add, stash, potentially start as a bye week replacement. Remember, not just this week, four teams on bye in week 11. Weeks 12, 14, six teams on bye in each of those weeks. We're going to need players like this to help fill our lineups down the stretch. Yeah, I believe he's still one of them. I think their bye week is in week 14, so Correct. Their, their, their bye week is coming up. Uh, just keep in mind, you said touchdowns. They have three rushing touchdowns combined on the season. Javante Williams has two. Jaleel McLaughlin has one. And no targets for Estime. So that's something that's a little bit of a problem moving forward. Gus Edwards is going to be the second running back for the Chargers. But it's a good spot to be in because J.K. Dobbins, we know, has had a hard time staying healthy. He's already passed, surpassed his career high for carries in a season. And will he hold up rest of year? Gus Edwards now, the next man up, he's going to pass Kamani Vidal, the number two guy on the, on the back in the depth chart there. Uh, missed the last four games with an ankle injury, but comes back against the Titans. 10 carries, 55 yards. You see 5.5 yards per carry. He basically does his entire career over five yards per carry. And so Edwards is in a spot where you might not want to start him anytime soon, but you certainly want to have him on your bench because if Dobbins does go down, we know that they've been throwing the ball a little bit more lately. This could be a good spot, though, for Gus Edwards to be a potential lottery ticket if Dobbins has to miss any time. And he could be a good bye week replacement at running back as well. And listen, for an older running back who's coming off this long layoff and injury, he looked good for the Chargers. And that offensive line, you know what the Chargers want to do. They want to run behind that big offensive line. And they're going to work Edwards in with J.K. Dobbins. But if Dobbins stays healthy, we figure that he will be the better running back of the two. Sure. Also, Gus Edwards, it's only his first game. He had 10 carries. He played 15 snaps. That was a little strange to see. If he's going to start keying off defenses that whenever he's on the field, he's going to get the ball. Defenses will smarten up to that. We need to see him play a little bit more. He's my second favorite running back to add. I'll take Estime first, but Gus Edwards shouldn't be far behind. And I'll tell you this, I bet Gus Edwards goes for a fraction of the fab that Audric Estime will go for in fantasy leagues this week. And again, don't forget about Akers just in case Jones does miss the game in week 11. He's expected to miss practice, but as of now is expected to play. Let's talk about the quarterbacks here, and there are two that we're excited about. We differ on who's the number one guy. For me, it's Bo Nix, for Davis, Russell Wilson. But you also have some guys that could be bye week replacements if you need them, or injury replacements. We know Dak Prescott now out for the remainder of the season. Trevor Lawrence may not soon be far behind dealing with that shoulder injury. So you got Jameis Winston taking on the Saints. You got Drake May taking on the Rams. And in some super flex two quarterback leagues, you're looking at Will Levis, you're looking at maybe Trey Lance if he gets this opportunity to start for the Cowboys. Mac Jones again replacing 
Uh, Trevor Lawrence there. Desmond Ritter could be the starter for the Raiders coming off of their bye. And don't overlook Joe Flacco. I know he had a bad game against the Bills. He did throw for over 270 yards and two touchdowns to that three interceptions. The Jets pass defense is not one to fear. Flacco can still have a decent game. And maybe Anthony Richardson down the road becomes the starter once again for the Colts. So I'll make the case for Nick. Can you make a quick case for Russell Wilson, Dave? In sure. terms of Nick's, he's coming off a strong stretch of games. Four games of his last six with 20 or more fantasy points. And he only had 20 fantasy points against the Chiefs. I thought it was one of his more impressive games, just given the matchup and the situation going into Kansas City and Arrowhead and playing as well as he has. I like him slightly better than Wilson this week. I also like him slightly better than Wilson rest of season. Rest of season schedule for him. He gets the Falcons this week, the Raiders in week 12, the Browns in week 13, which isn't exactly a, a terrible matchup. Biden week 14 comes off and gets the Colts in week 15. Could be a very good fantasy quarterback moving forward, as we've seen. I do like Russell Wilson this week against the uh, Ravens, but long term, I don't like him by comparison to Bonick. It's a tough schedule for Pittsburgh, and I'll admit that, but I think there's more upside with Russell Wilson. I'm really impressed with how he's played and how he's hitting those moon ball touchdowns down the field. We've seen George Pickens really connect with Russell Wilson, and I know there was just one play, one catch, one touchdown for Mike Williams, but I think Mike Williams can evolve into somebody that can help Russell Wilson, too. This whole offense has really looked great, and for this week's matchup against Baltimore, usually it's a slugfest between these two teams. Low scoring game, lots of field goals, not a lot of touchdowns that's a problem but we know that the Steelers are going to have a hard time running the football in this matchup and if the Steelers fall behind it's going to be on Russ to get them back into it and that secondary for Baltimore really just has not played well this season so I think Russ has a little bit more upside this week than Bo Nix and just down the line I think he's got more upside in general than Bo Nix. Okay I'll take Nix just based on the schedule and the running and just in terms of best game so far this season Nix has had a higher Russ uh, has barely played game. he's played yeah, three games. Yeah well I mean it's also a rookie quarterback though so uh, Nix is doing a great job so I'll take Nix you'll take Russ. We'll see who's better rest away and in week 11. Let's look at the wide receivers here and this is really a list of a lot of ifs because the guys at the top, the Colts are dependent on Michael Pittman not being there in week 11 and who knows when Joe Flacco maybe loses the job to Anthony Richardson which would sort of shatter almost all the, the Colts wide receivers as starting caliber fantasy option. Jerry Judy is in a great spot because Jameis Winston has targeted him a lot and he's got back to back games with 12 plus PPR points. Ricky Pearsall. I'm skipping over the second guys because I like to group them together because Adonai Mitchell is going to be in, in, in a little bit lower of priority. Same thing with Elijah Moore. So it's really Pierce 1, Judy 2, Pearsall 3 for me. Uh, Pearsall's in a good spot coming off a six target game where he had his first NFL touchdown against Tampa Bay. Keep that in mind. It was Tampa Bay. Christian Watson's got 13 targets in his last two games. We know DeMario Douglas was sort of chasing that Houston game, but he's getting a lot of opportunities from Drake May. Rashad Bateman may not be a disappearing act like we thought with uh, Deontay Johnson joining the roster. John Mechie could be a good Nico Collins replacement. Mike Williams, Dave mentioned it, the one catch, only one target, but 32-yard touchdown. Matt Collins, nice little surprise just in case that Cooper and Coleman, as we know, are out. And if Dalton Kincaid is out, he's got nine targets in his last two games, 12-plus PPR points in his last two games, and he may be the de facto tight end that we're looking at when we talk about Dawson Knox coming up in a second. But in terms of Pierce and Mitchell, you saw a strong performance for them against the Bills without Pittman on the field. Seven targets. Four catches, 81 yards in the touchdown for Pierce. Six of six for 71 yards for Mitchell. And again, it's all come down to will Pittman play in the game against the Jets. If he does, ignore Pierce, ignore Mitchell, go straight to Jerry Judy. If Pittman is out, I like these two guys based on their opportunity against the Jets. Dave, make the case for Ricky Pearsall and what he can be not only in week 11 against Seattle, but longer. Well, you said the magic two-letter word with the Colts guys, and that's if. If Pittman's out. What if Anthony Richardson plays? And I don't expect Anthony Richardson this week, but eventually he will be back. And then with the Cleveland Browns, it's more like, ugh, it's the Browns who I really want to trust Jerry Judy again. With Pearsall, we know what the role is. He's going to be a downfield threat for the 49ers. He's a good football player, man. He was moving really well. And, yes, he had a big touchdown against Tampa Bay. I would argue that he could make that play against pretty much any defense across the National Football League. The offensive line will protect Brock Purdy. Purdy's playing at a high level. I think that Ricky Pearsall is maybe the safest wide receiver to go and grab with the rest of season in mind. I think that he's going to continue to see six targets per game. I don't think he's going to have the same amount of targets every week as Debo Samuel is going to have, but I think that he is going to be involved in what the 49ers do. This is an explosive offense. They want players who can make plays after the catch. It's exactly what Pearsall did last week. All right, if you want to go safer, though, Judy's the safest of the bunch, without question. He's got eight targets in the two starts with Jameis Winston. He was giving you 12-plus PPR points in two of his first four games with Deshaun Watson, but wasn't getting the same opportunities. 19 targets in his last two games, 12 catches, over 73 yards receiving in both of those. He's safer than Ricky Pearsall because he's going to get more opportunities than Pearsall. And again, just as much upside based on what we've seen from a PPR perspective. So if 
if the Colts guys are out, I would go with Judy, but Pearsall also should be on the list. Just remember, you said two words. I thought you were going to say the magic two words, which is what really matters. Tampa Bay. Everybody scores against Tampa Bay. Let's talk about the tight ends here and the, the ones that you're looking at. It's not the prettiest of lists. You could also add Will Disley to this list as well. I did not include him for the graphic, but he is in the column on CBSSports.com. Dawson Knox, it sounds gross to say he's the number one tight end to add, but Dalton Kincaid's got a knee injury. Amari Cooper has a wrist injury. Keon Coleman's already out with a wrist injury, and they're facing the Kansas City Chiefs, number one in most fantasy points allowed to the position. So we could see Josh Allen go back a couple years when he used to lean on Dawson Knox, and this could be a throwback game for him. Remember, the Bills have a bye in Week 12, so they may be cautious with Kincaid and not rushing back. He said he came back in that game last week against the Colts with a knee injury, could not move the way he wanted to, so it sounds like he may not play in Week 12. And Dawson Knox and maybe Mac Collins, again, who's a big physical receiver, can step in and fill the void there. So you're looking at Dawson Knox. You see, for me, he's a top 10 tight end, top 15 for you. Do you like the matchup against Kansas City and the opportunity? How can you not? And really, it's more about the opportunity than it is the matchup. And that's saying something because the matchup has been pretty good for tight ends all this season long. And then the other thing I would suggest is rewind, or maybe we could show the screen again. Look at the names of the other tight ends that are on this list that you could find on your waiver wire. Knox is going to be at the top, and, and he's legit, and Pat Fryermuth is good too. I don't know if anybody else is going to make a big play for Jonu Smith or Davis Allen or Will Disley, whose name isn't even on the list. You could add Dawson Knox now. And if Dalton Kincaid is active and he plays, okay, you're going to drop Dawson Knox. You'll go back to your waiver wire. You'll probably pick up Disley over Jonu Smith or Davis Allen. But any of those three could be helpful in full PPR leagues. But that's the point. You roll the dice on Dawson Knox, knowing what the upside is if he's in a prominent position in a favorable matchup and what might be a high scoring game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's not just Kincaid dealing with an injury. Laporta's got an injury as well that he may miss the game with a shoulder problem, which Bob Brock Wright is there. You also got Trey McBride on a bye and Kay Dotton on a bye. So the tight end position is a little bit suffering. So the tight end position is suffering a little bit this week, which is why you see these guys as the waiver wire options. All right, make sure you check out our Fantasy Football Today podcast. You can find us wherever podcasts are available. Scan the QR code as well. We're helping you dominate your fantasy leagues. You'll hear all of our waiver wire discussion a little bit more in depth on the Fantasy Football Today podcast and check us out on YouTube as well.